Hi, I'm John, the engineer, and this is the last installment in the Metcalf Stiff the Bank foreclosure fight to the Supreme Court of Canada with the uh, petition of right to Prince Charles and Diana while they were in town on the same day. So, early May, Mrs. Metcalf's been through the Superior Court, through the Divisional Court, and she's now into the Ontario Court of Appeal. And a Toronto Star article dated May 3rd, 1983, You're murdering me, allergy-plagued woman tells court, by Rick Haliachuk, Toronto Star. A Smith Falls woman told the Ontario Court of Appeal yesterday it was committing murder by refusing to prevent her eviction from her home. You're murdering me when you send me out of this courtroom, shouted Jean Metcalf, 51, who suffers from environmental and food allergies and is extremely sensitive to chemicals in the air. I can't go live on the street, Metcalf told the three judges at Osgood Hall. It's murder! So Metcalf had sought the court's help to get more time to find another place to live in her eastern Ontario hometown. The Bank of Montreal obtained a writ of possession on her house last fall when the mortgage payments fell behind. Breathing oxygen through a tube from a special cylinder, Mrs. Metcalf shocked the Osgood Hall courtroom packed with black-robed lawyers. Although sympathetic to her plight, Mr. Justice Charles Dubin told the woman she had no status before the court because the matter had already been litigated at the divisional court. This is a court of law, not a social aid. Agency, he said, and Justice Dubin just died recently, and I hope he's getting his ass kicked in heaven. You're committing murder, the woman sobbed as she was led out of the courtroom by her advocate, John Termal. Outside Osgood Hall, Metcalf explained that she'd tried but failed to find another place to live. Metcalf, who's unemployed and living on 175 a month welfare, said she can survive in her house only because it's ecologically clean. So, poor lady out of her house. But, Metcalf goes to Supreme Court, is the story. By Marianne Baudet, Whig Standard. Jean Metcalf hasn't given up fighting the Smith Falls woman who fears she'll die if she is evicted from her environmentally safe home. Has been granted a hearing in the Supreme Court of Canada on June 6th to try to delay the Bank of Montreal from repossessing her house. She may be coming Monday. Uh, sorry, the, the social former social workers applied to the Supreme Court for the delay on the basis that she's guaranteed a right to life under the Charter of Rights. I hope they, the court, will listen this time, Metcalf said today. Metcalf lost her bid for one more time when she appeared in the Ontario Supreme Court Monday. They wouldn't listen. I tried to tell them about my health problems, but they don't understand, she said. I only asked for a bit more time to find a place. I didn't want to fight the bank. I just wanted more time. So, anyway, she's in this, going into the Supreme Court of Canada, but it got put off for two weeks, and what a fluke it got put off to the same day as the visit of Prince Charles and Diana for a proceeding in Ottawa on the same day she's in court. So, Allergy Victims Council threatens royal ruckus. We picketed them nine times with her. We made up a great big sign, said Petition of Right, Supreme Court of Canada may be evict me soon. Allergies to environmental killing me. Please hear my plea. A petition of right for the prince to stop and listen. So Ottawa, a woman who says she's allergic to just about everything fainted in the Supreme Court of Canada lobby Monday as her counsel, who isn't a lawyer, vowed to take her case to Prince Charles if the court throws it out. John Turmel told reporters he hoped to bring Prince Charles's attention to the plight of Marjorie Jean Metcalf during the prince's visit to Ottawa if the court refused to hear her case. And, of course, it won't be heard until today when he's there. So, Prince Charles, who arrived Monday with his wife Diana, will still be in town. Termella, founder of the Fringe Christian Credit Party, is an engineer who's helped people like Metcalf stave off mortgage foreclosures through court action. His argument is that the eviction violates natural law, biblical law, and criminal code gaming provisions. The natural law argument is that it's physically impossible for borrowers to repay both the principal and the interest when the banks only created and loaned out the principal. He refers to interest as usury. Termel contends interest rates are fees, quote, for the privilege of participating in a gamble, the death gamble, and as a result, violate the law against gambling. He also says banks' attempts to evict Metcalf are subjecting her to cruel and unusual punishment in violation of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. So, on the date of the hearing, here's the report from Montreal Gazette, June 22nd. Judges threatened with murder. 
And five judges of the Supreme Court of Canada were told yesterday they could be facing murder charges if Marjorie Jean Metcalf is evicted from her home in Smith Falls. She quoted homicide sections of the criminal code which say that anyone who directly or indirectly causes the death of another may be charged with murder. So if I die within a year and a day and it's going to be plain murder by you and you and everyone, she said pointing at the judges and lawyers around her. She said she's instructed her counsel, John Trammell, a Christian credit party founder, who says interest rates are usury, to press murder charges against the judges who've heard her case if she is evicted and dies. Ecological illness. Miss Metcalf says she has an ecological illness that makes her allergic to everything outside her specially adapted house. The Bank of Montreal has been trying to repossess it since she began having trouble making monthly mortgage payments more than a year ago. She's been fighting back with a series of court actions, including an attempt to charge the bank manager in Smith's Falls with genocide. Another story I didn't do. The court gave her a 20-minute hearing, longer than usual, on a motion for leave to appeal, then reserved judgment. To think about it, Metcalf, who says she's a nurse before becoming ill last year, arrived in court gulping oxygen. She was accompanied by a nurse, Termel, and about a dozen other Christian credit adherents. Cruel punishment. She looked frail but sounded determined as she fought off Mr. Justice Roland Ritchie's initial comment that the court was sympathetic but it had to administer the law. I have the right to be heard, she replied. It's important enough. It's cruel and unusual punishment. That's the way I've been treated by you people, judges and banks. You all cut me off before I can explain. When I go on the streets and I die, I've told John Termel to lay a murder charge against everyone connected with the case. My life is at stake, not yours. I can demonstrate to you how interest rates kill, if you'll only give me the time. A bank lawyer said she owes 35000 on a mortgage with a 10-year, 10% interest rate. And remember, it eventually cost them forty-five grand in lawyer's fees when they got the house. Metcalf said mortgage is derived from the words meaning death and gamble. I can show you how the death gamble works, she told the judges. And remember, for the Jesus defense, you got to learn to play the little game to repossess their watches and show how somebody gets knocked out of the game. So, then, the neat thing was Prince Charles was in town on the day of her hearing, so right after that, we went right up to Parliament Hill with our big protest sign, and there's a picture of Prince Charles and the protest sign in the back and Mrs. Metcalf under it, and there's Pierre Trudeau looking really pissed off because I'd been picketing Parliament for four years by then, and he knew who I was and who was disrupting and <laughs> pissing on his parade. So, and then we finally sent off the... Uh, Metcalf Termel ship kit to Royals um, by Barry Raisin. Although Jean Metcalf appears to be firmly entrenched in her home until the Supreme Court of Canada hands down a decision, she's leaving nothing to chance. Yesterday, she, has, who's been fighting the Bank of Montreal for possession of her home since last fall, sent off a letter to Queen Elizabeth asking for help. Mrs. Metcalf and her ally, Ottawa Bank fighter John Termel, along with a coterie of like-minded people, members of Termel's political group, the Christian Credit Party, got together to put together a package to Prince Charles. They were sending it by courier to Edmonton, where the prince is scheduled to officially open the World University Games on Friday. Along with Mrs. Metcalf's letter to the Queen, the package enclosed a plea by Mr. Termel to install a high-tech monarch on the throne. A number of newspaper clippings documenting the unusual case since it first came before the courts, and a huge sign which summarized the case and was carried by the group during the Prince and Princess Diana's visit to Ottawa last week. So the material along with the bumper sticker saying abolish interest rates was ceremoniously packaged and shipped by courier bef uh, shortly before 1 p.m. on Tuesday so it would be waiting for Prince Charles when he arrived in Edmonton. Mr. Termel believes in abolition of interest rates and in keeping Mrs. Metcalf in her house, has argued that charging interest is a violation of biblical, physical, and criminal law. Mrs. Metcalf refuses to move from her house, although she hasn't made a mortgage payment in more than a year, until she finds another environmentally regulated house. Suffering from a number of allergies, she says she can't survive in a normal environment. The case was heard in the Supreme Court of Canada last Tuesday, and the court reserved judgment. Indications are Mrs. Metcalf will be in the house until at least September, when the court is scheduled to resume sitting. So, what happens? The Supreme Court of Canada defeated Metcalf leaves home. Supreme Court of Canada orders her out. With Terz and Riles, she's ordered out, and I'm not going to go into that. But what's interesting is, a little while later, she kicks her way back in. And we end up going through the process in the courts for another while longer again. So, allergy suffer, kicks her way back into the home. Metcalf moved back into house, signs up on the windows. Allergy victim fights on. Allergy ridden woman returns to safe house. Severely allergic woman evicted for second time. 
Then a kindly doctor bought her house, let her move back in, and it had a handy ending. Mrs. Metcalf's foreclosure case to the Supreme Court of Canada, who put her out in the streets in the middle of winter with nowhere to go. <laughs> What's funny about the Charles and Diana visit is that we picketed Charles and Diana nine times over their three-day visit. Uh, the first day, three times with Mrs. Metcalf in tow, including one time right in front of the Governor General's uh, residence. And as they were going in, he went by Mrs. Metcalf a block away. And when he went by me, I shouted at him and I went, Hey! Petitioner right over there! So I wasn't too happy, and he went in. And then on the last ninth time, it was as they were zooming out of town towards the Ottawa airport, and I was the only guy with a picket sign there with an RCMP guard. And as they zoomed by, I could see Diana turn around and look in the car at this picketer as she took off to the airport. So that's the end of the story with Charles and Diana. Nothing ever happened to, with the petitioner right.